सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक ऑफ साइंस फॉर क्लास सेवन एन टाइटल्ड साइंस दिस इज लेसन सेवेंटीन फॉरेस्ट आ लाइफ लाइन फ्रॉम पेज टू हंड्रेड एंड सिक्स टू पेज टू हंड्रेड नाइनटीन Let's listen to the lesson 17 Forests are lifeline page 206 One evening Bojo entered the park with an elderly person he introduced him to his friends Professor Ahmed was a scientist working in the university the children started playing while professor ahmed sat on a bench in the corner he was tired as he had participated in the golden jubilee celebrations of the town after a while the children also came and sat around him they wanted to know about the celebrations professor ahmed told them that after the cultural program the senior people discussed the town's unemployment problem A plan was proposed to put up a factory by cleaning an area of the forest just outside the town. This would give the increasing population of the town a chance to get jobs. The children were very surprised when Professor Ahmed told them that many people had objected to this idea. This is because the forests serve as green lungs. and water purifying systems in nature professor ahmed explained the children were confused professor ahmed realized that the children had not visited a forest the children also wanted to know more about the forest so they decided to visit it with professor ahmed 17.1 visit to a forest one sunday morning the children packed a few things like a knife a hand lens a stick a notebook and walked together through a forest trail near a village on their way they met tibu a young boy of their age group of nearby village who was taking cattle for grazing along with his aunt he was very agile running here and there to keep the herd together when he saw the children Tibu also started walking along with them while his aunt went on a different path as soon as they entered the forest tibu raised his hand and signaled them to keep quiet because noise could disturb the animals living in the forest tibu then took them to a place at a height to show them the broad view of the forest children were surprised because they could not observe any land you can observe this in figure 17.1 the different tree tops had formed green cover over the land however the cover was not uniformly green the environment was peaceful and a cool breeze was blowing this made children quite fresh and happy figure 17.1 a view of a forest page 207 while coming down they got excited on hearing a sudden sound of birds and some noise from the top branches of the trees tibu told them to relax since it was a normal phenomenon here because of the children's presence some monkeys had climbed higher up on the trees where they disturbed the birds animals often give this type of warning call to alert other animals tibu also told many other animals like boar bison jackals porcupine elephants live in the deeper areas of the forest you can observe this in figure 17.2 professor ahmed cautioned children that they should not go deep into the forest 
Bojo and Paheli remembered that they have studied about forests as an example of a habitat in class 6. You can observe this in figure 17.3. They could understand now how the forest provides a home for many animals and plants. Figure 17.3 Forest as a habitat This is a forest. We can observe lots of animals in it. Figure 17.2 Some forest animals Here we can observe some forest animals. They are close to a water body. Page 208 The land where the children were walking was uneven and covered with many trees. Tibu helped them to identify Sal, Teak, Semel, Shisham, Neem, Palash, Fig, Kher, Amla, Bamboo, Kachnar. You can observe these in figure 17.4. Professor Ahmed pointed out that there are several other trees, shrubs, herbs and grasses in the forest. The forest floor and the trees were also covered with different types of creepers and climbers. The sun was barely visible through the leaves of the trees, making it quite dark in the forest. Figure 17.4 Some Forest Plants Here we can observe the trees of Neem, Bamboo, Shisham and Semel. Activity 17.1 Observe the various things in your home and make a list of those which are made from material which may have been obtained from the forest. You might have many wooden items on your list like plywood, fuel wood, boxes, paper matchsticks and furniture. Do you know that gum, oils, spices, fodder for animals and medicinal plants are also some of the products which we get from the forest? You can observe them in figure 17.5. Page 209 Based on the products that we get from plants, try to fill table 17.1. One example of each plant is already given. Fill the table by adding more examples. Sheila wondered who would have planted these trees. Professor Ahmed replied that in nature, trees produce enough seeds. The forest floor provides favorable conditions for them to germinate and develop into seedlings and saplings. Some grow up into trees. He added that branchy part of a tree above the stem is known as the crown of the tree. You can observe this in figure 17.6. Professor Ahmed asked children to look up and observe how the branches of the tall trees look like a roof over the other plants in the forest. He told them that this is called a canopy. You can observe this in figure 17.7. Figure 17.5 Forest Products here we can observe honey, sealing wax, wooden statue, catechu and gum. Figure 17.6 Some crown shapes Here we can observe trees in different shapes. Some are circular, some are triangular and some have other unique shapes. Activity 17.2 Visit a forest or a park in your neighborhood. Observe the trees and try to identify them. You can take the help of some elders or books on trees. List the characteristics of the trees that you observe, such as the height, shape of leaves, crowns, 
flowers and fruits. Also, draw the crowns of some trees. Professor Ahmed pointed out that trees had crowns of different types and sizes. These had created different horizontal layers in the forest. These are known as understories. You can observe them in figure 17.7. .7. Giant and tall trees constituted the top layer followed by shrubs and tall grasses and herbs formed the lowest layer. Table 17.1 Plants and their products Here we can observe a table. This table has four columns and five rows. The first column has gum. The second column has timber. The third column has medicinal and the fourth column has oil. The first row has been filled for you. You have to fill in the other rows. In the first row we have Babool, Shisham, Neem, Sandalwood. Page 210. Figure 17.7 .7, Canopy and understories in a forest. Here we can observe a dense forest. At the top we can observe the canopy. Below, somewhere in the middle, we can observe the understory. Would we observe similar kind of trees in every forest? Asked Bojo. Professor Ahmed said, No. Due to different climatic conditions, there are variations in the types of trees and other plants. The types of animals also differ from forest to forest. A few children were busy watching beautiful butterflies fluttering here and there on the flowers of shrubs and herbs. They had a close look at the bushes. While doing that, their hair and clothes had seeds and thorns clinging to them. They came across numerous insects, spiders, squirrels, ants and various other animals on the bark of the trees plant leaves and on decaying leaves on the forest floor. You can observe the forest floor in figure 17.8. They started making sketches of these creatures. The forest floor seemed dark colored and was covered with a layer of dead and decaying leaves, fruits, seeds, twigs and small herbs. The decaying matter was moist and warm. Children picked up various seeds and leaves for their collection. Walking over the dead leaf layer on the forest floor was like walking over a spongy carpet. Is the decaying matter always warm? Professor Ahmed suggested that the children could perform an activity to get an answer to this question. Figure 17.8 Forest Flow Page 211 Activity 17.3 Dig a small pit. Put vegetable waste and leaves in it. Cover them with soil. Add some water. After three days, remove the upper layer of the soil. Does the pit feel warm inside? Paheli asked, there are so many trees here. Also, there are many forests like this. What difference will it make if we cut some trees for a factory? Professor Ahmed said, You may have read about autotrophs, heterotrophs and saprotrophs. You have learned how green plants produce food. All animals whether herbivores or carnivores depend ultimately on plants for food. Organisms which feed on plants often get eaten by other organisms and so on. 
For example, grass is eaten by insects, which in turn is taken by the frog. The frog is consumed by snakes. This is said to form a food chain. Grass to insects to frog to snake to eagle. Many food chains can be found in the forest. All food chains are linked. If any one food chain is disturbed, it affects other food chains. Every part of the forest is dependent on the other parts. If we remove one component, say trees, all other components would be affected. Figure 17.9 Interrelationship of plant, soil and decomposers in a forest. Here, we can observe a forest in this picture. There are a couple of people in the forest. A monkey can also be observed on a tree. Birds are flying. Trees are giving out oxygen and taking in carbon dioxide. The process of photosynthesis is taking place. Beneath the soil, we can find water. There are also decomposers and nutrients close to the roots of the trees. Page 212 Professor Ahmed asked children to pick up leaves from the forest floor and observe them under a hand lens. They found tiny mushrooms over the decaying leaves. They also saw an army of tiny insects, millipedes, ants and beetle on them. They were wondering how these organisms lived there. Professor Ahmed explained that apart from these animals, which are easily seen, there are several organisms and microorganisms that live in the soil. Paheli wondered what mushroom and other microorganisms eat. Professor Ahmed replied that they feed upon the dead plant and animal tissues and convert them into a dark colored substance called humus. You have learned about humus in chapter 9. In which layer of the soil would you find humus? What is its importance to the soil? The microorganisms which convert the dead plants and animals to humors are known as decomposers. These microorganisms play an important role in the forest. Soon, Paheli removed some dead leaves and discovered under them a layer of humus on forest floor. The presence of humus ensures that the nutrients of the dead plants and animals are released into the soil. From there, these nutrients are again absorbed by the roots of the living plants. What happens if an animal dies in the forest? Sheila asked. Tibu replied, the dead animals become food for vultures, crows, jackals and insects. In this way, the nutrients are cycled. So, nothing goes waste in a forest. You can observe this in figure 17.9 Paheli reminded Professor Ahmed that he had not explained why forests are called green lungs. Professor Ahmed explained that plants release oxygen through the process of photosynthesis. The plants help to provide oxygen for animal respiration. They also maintain the balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. You can observe this in figure 17.10. That is why forests are called lungs. There's a thought bubble given here. A picture of Paheli is next to it. Paheli reminded their friends that they have studied photosynthesis in chapter 1. Figure 17.10 Balance of Oxygen and carbon dioxide. There's a cyclical diagram here. Plants give O2 to animals. 
animals give CO2 to plants. Then again, plants give O2 to animals and this process keeps going on. The children observed clouds forming in the sky. Bojo recalled what he had learnt about the water cycle in class 6. Trees take in water from their roots and release water vapour into the air through evaporation. If there were fewer trees, how will the water cycle be affected? Tibu told them that the forest is not just home to plants and animals. Many people also live in the forest. Some of them may belong to different tribes. Page 213 Tibu explained that these people depend mostly on the forests. The forest provides them with food, shelter, water and medicines. They have traditional knowledge about many medicinal plants in the forest. While Bojo was drinking water from a small stream, he observed some deer crossing the stream. You can observe this in figure 17.11. They disappeared into the bushes. The dense bushes and the tall grass provided animals with the food and shelter. They also protect them from carnivores that live in the forest. Figure 17.11 Deer in a forest There's a thought bubble given here. A picture of Paheli is next to it. Paheli remembered that she observed a people sampling on the side wall in her school. Can you help her to understand how this would have happened? Tibu then started looking closely at the forest floor. Soon, he called and showed the children droppings of some animals and explained the difference between various types of droppings. Professor Ahmed informed them that the forest officers could recognize the presence of some animals in the forest by their droppings and footprints. Bojo called everyone and showed them a large decaying heap of animal dropping. Several beetles and grubs were feeding on the heap and a bunch of seedlings was sprouting. These seedlings are of the herbs and shrubs. The animals also disperse the seeds of certain plants and help the forest to grow and regenerate. The decaying animal dung also provides nutrients to the seedlings to grow, said Professor Ahmed. Figure 17.12 A sapling on a wall After listening to this, Bojo noted in his notebook, By harbouring greater variety of plants, the forest provides greater opportunities for food and habitat for the herbivores. Larger number of herbivores means increased availability of food for a variety of carnivores. Page 214 The wide variety of animals helps the forest to regenerate and grow. Decomposers help in maintaining the supply of nutrients to the growing plants in the forest. Therefore, the forest is a dynamic living entity full of life and vitality. It was about afternoon and the children wanted to go back. Tibu suggested another route for going back. While they were going back, it started raining. However, surprisingly, they observed that the raindrops were not hitting the forest floor directly. The uppermost layer of the forest canopy intercepted the flow of raindrops and most of the water was coming down through the branches and the stems of the trees. From the leaves, it was dripping slowly over branches of the shrubs and herbs. You can observe this in figure 17.13. Figure 17.13 Rainwater drips from the trees and seeps into the ground. Here, 
we can observe a forest. It is raining in the forest and the process of transpiration and evaporation is taking place. The closed canopy and many layers of vegetation slow down the speed of raindrops. We can also observe the root system. The covered ground with decaying material acts like a sponge. The root system helps water to seep down in the ground. We can also observe the water table. Page 215 They found that the ground was still dry. After about half an hour, the rain stopped. They noticed that the layer of dead leaves over the forest floor appeared wet now. But water did not stagnate in the forest. Bojo thought that if it had rained so heavily in his town, it would have flooded the drains and roads. What would happen if it rains heavily in your town? Professor Ahmed told them that the forest also acts as a natural absorber of rainwater and allows it to seep. It helps maintain the water table throughout the year. Forests not only help in containing floods, but also help maintain the flow of water in the streams so that we get a steady supply of water. On the other hand, if trees are not present, rain hits the ground directly and may flood the area around it. Heavy rain may also damage the soil. Roots of trees normally bind the soil together, but in their absence, the soil is washed away or eroded. The children spent an hour at Tibu's village on their way back. The weather of the village was quite pleasant. Villagers told them that due to the surrounding forest, they receive good rainfall. The air also remained cool. Noise pollution, too, is less because the forest absorbs the noise of their nearby highway. The children learnt about the history of the village. It surprised them that the villages and the agricultural fields of that area were created after clearing the forest about 60 years ago. Tibu's grandfather told them that when he was young, the village was not as large as it was now. It was also surrounded by forests. Construction of roads, buildings, industrial development and increasing demand of wood created pressure on the forests and it started vanishing. He was not happy that the forest adjoining their village is not regenerating and is on the verge of disappearing due to overgrazing of animals and indiscriminate felling of trees. Professor Ahmed said that if we did things wisely, we could preserve forests and environment as well as have development. Children prepared a few pictures to show the consequences of such an event. At the end of the visit, Professor Ahmed asked children to sum up the importance of forests. The children wrote, Forests provide us with oxygen. They protect soil and provide habitat to a large number of animals. Forests help in bringing good rainfall in neighbouring areas. They are a source of medicinal plants, timber and many other useful products. We must preserve our forests. There's a thought bubble given here. A picture of Bojo is next to it. What would happen if forests disappear? Page 216 Here we have few images. They have been explained. 1. If forests disappear, the amount of carbon dioxide in air will increase, resulting in the increase of Earth's temperature. 2. In the absence of trees and plants, the animals will not get food and shelter. 3. In the absence of trees, the soil will not hold water, which will cause floods. 4. 
deforestation will endanger our life and environment. Think what we can do to preserve our forests. Page 217 Keywords Canopy Crown Decomposers Deforestation Humus Regeneration Seed dispersal Soil erosion Understory What you have learnt 1. We get various products from the forests surrounding us. 2. Forest is a system comprising various plants, animals and microorganisms. 3. In a forest, trees form the uppermost layer followed by shrubs. The herbs form the lowest layer of vegetation. 4. Different layers of vegetation provide food and shelter for animals, birds and insects. 5. The various components of the forest are interdependent on one another. 6. The forest keeps on growing and changing and can regenerate. 7. In the forest, there is interaction between soil, water, air and living organisms. 8. Forests protect the soil from erosion. 9. Soil helps forests to grow and regenerate. 10. Forests are the lifeline of the forest-dwelling communities. 11. Forests influence climate, water cycle and air quality. Exercises 1. Explain how animals dwelling in the forest help it grow and regenerate. 2. Explain how forests prevent Floods. 3. What are decomposers? Name any two of them. What do they do in the forest? 4. Explain the role of forest in maintaining the balance between oxygen and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. 5. Explain why there is no waste in a forest. 6. List 5 products we get from forests. Page 218 Fill in the blanks. A. The insects, butterflies, honeybees and birds help flowering plants in blank. B. A forest is a purifier of blank and Blank. C. Herbs form the blank layer in the forest. D. The decaying leaves and animal droppings in a forest enrich the blank. 8. Why should we worry about the conditions and issues related to forests far from us? 9. Explain why there is a need of variety of animals and plants in a forest. 10. In figure 17.15, the artist has forgotten to put the labels and directions on the arrows. Mark the directions on the arrows and label the diagram using the following labels. Clouds Rain Atmosphere Carbon dioxide, oxygen, plants, animals, soil, roots, water table. Figure 17.15 This figure represents a forest. You have to mark the directions and label the diagram. Oxygen and carbon dioxide have already been labeled.
11. Which of the following is not a forest product? 1. Gum 2. Plywood 3. Sealing wax 4. Kerosene 12. Which of the following statements is not correct? 1. Forests protect the soil from erosion. 2. Plants and animals in a forest are not dependent on one another. 3. Forests influence the climate and water cycle. 4. Soil helps forests to grow and regenerate. Page 219 13. Microorganisms act upon the dead plants to produce 1. Sand 2. Mushrooms 3. Humus 4. Wood Extended Learning, Activities and Projects 1. The Department of Environment is to decide whether some portion of a forest in your area could be cleared for a housing complex. Write a letter to the department explaining your point of view as a concerned citizen. 2. Visit a forest. Here is a list of points that would make your visit more fruitful. A. Make sure that you have permission to go into the forest. B. Make sure that you can find your way around. Get a map and go along with someone who is familiar with the area. C. Keep a record of the things you observe and do. Observations make the visit interesting. Sketches and photographs are useful. D. You may record bird calls. E. Collect different kinds of seeds or hard fruits like nuts. F. Try to recognize various types of trees, shrubs, herbs, etc. Make lists of plants from different places in the forest and of different layers. You may not be able to name all the plants, but it is worth recording and seeing where they grow. Make a record of approximate heights of plants, crown shape, bark texture, leaf size, and flower color. G. Learn to recognize the animal's droppings. H. Interview the forest officials and the people of surrounding villages and other visitors. You must never collect birds' eggs and their nests should never be disturbed. You can read more on the following website www.wild-india.com Did you know? In India, the area under forest cover is about 21% of the total area. It had steadily been falling since independence. But people now seem to have realized the importance of the forest cover. Reports suggest that the area under forest cover has slightly increased in recent years. The chapter 17 of total 18 chapters of the book ends here. Narrator Akash Ahuja Producer Vandana Arimardan Presented by CIET NCERT New Delhi, India